Three questions, half of carbohydrates. Let's do this. First question, what is the structure and function of monosaccharides? Okay, now, in order to kind of get rid of some of the extra stuff, I'm gonna focus on glucose here, but I will mention the other monosaccharides that you know about. I want you to remember, though, that the monosaccharides are the basic unit or monomer Right, so remember that the biological molecules, most of them, are made up of smaller molecules. And in the case of, and those smaller molecules are called monomers, and um, starch, cellulose, glycogen, they are big molecules made up of many small units called, and, and the monomer, and the monomer is monosaccharides. So we're going to look at these monosaccharides and we're going to go as far as disaccharides in this one. And then in another little uh, lesson or session, uh, we'll cover the, the complex carbohydrates, the polysaccharides. Okay, so um, they're the basic unit of polysaccharides. So monosaccharides can come in two varieties. They can be hexose. So remember, the, the general formula for carbohydrates is C, whatever number, and for every one carbon, you get a H2O. Okay, now hexose is, there's two kinds of monomer, hexose and pentose, right? So we have hexose and we have pentose. In terms of hexose, what we're talking about is C6H12O6, okay? Now, that's just the number and the elements, but remember, you can join them up in different ways to give you different kinds of sugars. Uh, that might still have the same uh, formula here, all right? So in terms of hexose, we are talking about glucose, all right? And it's important that you know the structure of glucose. You might not need to know the structure of the other um, uh, monosaccharides in detail, though you, you should be able to tell them apart at least, okay? What defines hexose, first of all, okay? Actually, yeah, the, the defining factor of a hexose is that it's got six carbons, okay? Um, please don't confuse that with the shape of the ring structure. Sometimes uh, that can be misleading, okay? So if we look at glucose, right, we have this basic structure, okay? So you've got a six-membered ring, but one of the members is oxygen in the ring, and then you've got a carbon sticking out up top there. So that's a CH2 OH group, and then uh, at least in alpha glucose, you have the OH group here downwards. You've got a hydrogen up there, and then the next OH group will be down, hydrogen there. The next OH group is up here, hydrogen there. The OH group here is down, and the hydrogen up there, and there's a hydrogen up there. That's alpha glucose. Beta glucose, remember, also monosaccharide. Everything else the same, this switched the other way around at carbon one, the OH group is above the plane of the ring. Okay, so that's structurally speaking, that's what glucose is. Okay, now glucose is a molecule that has a biological function. Okay, now essentially it is used for respiration. Okay, the reason is because it has these carbon-hydrogen bonds that when you break those down, you can release the energy, and that energy, well, is released during the process of respiration and is used, to, is transferred to the molecule ATP, okay? So it's a respiratory substrate. That's one of its biological, or its key biological role. Um, things that, its, its structure allows it to perform this very well, okay? It, it's also very easy to, transport. It's easy to transport because it is a polar molecule. It's got these OH groups that give it partial charges and that allows it to be dissolved. Okay, it's easy to dissolve. All right, and it's relatively, it's relatively small. So it can't just diffuse across membranes, but it is easy to transport across um, through a carrier protein. Okay, so these things make glucose very um, useful as a respiratory substrate. And because you can join glucose molecules up, you can also store them inside cells by joining them up and forming polysaccharides. 
Okay, um, so that is our hexose example. We're also going to look at some other examples of monosaccharides that you need to know about. Okay, but I won't go into too much detail about those. So we have glucose. So let me just put a little box around that because glucose obviously comes up quite a bit. But are there other hexoses that you need to know about? Okay, so other hexoses include sucrose, no, fructose. Okay, so you need to know about fructose. galactose okay um, you don't need to know them kind of structurally you just need to know of them in terms of pentoses there are very important pentose sugars as well the two that we need to know about are ribose and deoxy ribose okay now what does a pentose sugar look like it looks like it's got an oxygen there and it's got a five membered ring but there's only four carbons in the ring and then we have a fifth carbon sticking out up there okay now ribose and deoxyribose are important in the nucleic acids so in terms of functions uh, ribose is important in the structure of RNA and deoxyribose is important in the structure of DNA and I believe that concludes our answering of the first question, which is, what is the structure and function of monosaccharides? Question, how are monosaccharides joined? They are joined, of course, in condensation reactions. Okay, now, as part of that process, what I've tried to indicate here is um, the OH group of one glucose um, essentially comes into proximity of another OH group of another glucose, the atoms shown here come together and combine to form water, hence the condensation. What happens is that that carbon then, instead of unable to then form an, a bond to that oxygen, because that oxygen is now here, that carbon then forms a bond to the oxygen of the OH group of the neighboring glucose molecule. And in doing so, it makes a bridge between the molecules and that bridge is called, yep, the glycosidic bond, okay? Often uh, kind of also uh, labeled with the carbons that it joins, so that's a 1,4 glycosidic bond. Okay, so condensation reactions, glycosidic bonds, okay? Um, and there we have it, and water is produced, and remember the disaccharide is also produced. So glucose and glucose, and the disaccharide in this case produced is maltose, and that's basically the fundamentals of how two glucose molecules can come together to form maltose, but that's essentially how many, many glucose molecules can combine end to end to form even longer and bigger, more complex carbohydrates, such as starch, such as cellulose, such as glycogen. Okay, so there we have it. That's the formation, okay, of a disaccharide. What are the functions of disaccharides? Now, so maltose, where, where does maltose pop up in the specification? So maltose, uh, what do we need to know about maltose? We need to know that maltose is a disaccharide of glucose and glucose. Okay, um, what else do we need to know? Um, really, that's it. Yeah, I guess um, where it pops up is when starch is broken down, okay, in the animal digestive system, uh, the breakdown of starch, the breakdown of ingested starch results in the production of maltose and then maltose is then further broken down to glucose and absorbed into the blood okay and then it's assimilated from that point it will go to the liver the liver will deal with it sucrose is um, a disaccharide of glucose and 
fructose. So yes, this, this is something that you will have to um, learn and memorize. That's the whole point. That's what we're doing right now. Okay, sucrose is glucose and fructose. Where you will find it is in plants and it's a way that plants can transport glucose. Okay, um, plants, I'll just put it translo, plants and translocation. So when plants want to transport glucose, um, the idea being that glucose might get used up along the way from point A to point B, but by forming it, combining it with fructose making sucrose, it's less likely to get used up uh, uh, in respiration while it's being transported. Okay, um, and that's sucrose. Lactose, lactose is glucose and galactose. Okay, that's one of our other hexoses that we need to know about. Uh, lactose is a sugar that is found in dairy products. Okay, but also it pops up in year two. A-level biology in, and bacteria have a particular response when um, to the presence of lactose. They switch on the genes needed to make use of lactose. When glucose is not around and lactose is present, bacteria can switch um, to using lactose instead and that forms part of the lac operon um, little topic area but that's you know for ultimately that's for later but that's our disaccharides that's what you need to know in terms of disaccharides know of these um, don't need to worry too much about their structure particularly if you have invested in knowing your monosaccharides this should be fine for you just need to remember what the combinations are that go together okay that's been monosaccharides and disaccharides in the next one, we'll start looking at our big uh, carbohydrates, our polysaccharides. Remember, at this point, guys, you want to keep these questions, hang on to these questions, and you want to practice being able to reproduce the answers and, get, and improve the quality of your answers over time. Good luck.